All right, so now we're going to jump into something called object-oriented programming. Now, object-oriented programming is a style of programming that you see in many languages out there, not just Python. You have Python, C Sharp, Java, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, Swift. All these languages have object-oriented programming included in them. So what exactly is object-oriented programming? You can think of it as a style of programming where you write your code in the form of objects. So that probably doesn't make much sense to you. Think of it this way. Think of when we create a function in Python, and with the Python function, we're able to include all kinds of code. Sometimes the code could be variables, sometimes it could be conditionals like if statements, sometimes it could be loops like whiles and for loops and so on. We can put a whole bunch of code inside of a function. Kind of cool. So then with a function code, we can reuse the function by calling a function. We've seen this, we know all about this, yada, yada, yada. So with an object, you can think of it as a giant, super powerful function. An object is a package of code and inside of an object, you can include a whole bunch of functions. You can include a whole bunch of variables and all kinds of other code in there. And the added bonus is when you do create an object with Python, Python will automatically give that code, that object code that you create, a whole bunch of extra power. And that's just one reason why you would want to create objects with your Python code. There's a whole bunch of other reasons as well. Object-oriented programming makes it easy for you to think about, to conceive of, to kind of plan out your app, your program. So by organizing your program in the form of objects, which we're going to do very soon, you will have a much easier time of organizing, especially bigger projects. There's much more to it than that, but that's just the intro. So what I want to do now is create our very first object in Python. Ready? So let's launch our code editor right here. And you see a comment at the top. We know it's a comment because of the number sign here. Now, I'm not going to mention that anymore because by this time, we should know. So how do you create a object? Well, we use a special keyword called class. And you're going, why do we use the keyword class to create an object? Shouldn't we have the keyword object? That's a very good question. And we're going to get into that in a second. But for now, just write out this code as I'm doing. So class car, again, whoop, let me fix something. Because it's a class or an object, we use the convention in Python to use a capital for the name of your class like that. So before I had a lowercase c. Now, by putting it a capital C, it makes it more clear that this is an object. You know, in coding, you have conventions, things that you should do or should not do to make your life as a nerd easier. So that's what we do with objects. So now we're going to use our doc string. We've seen this before, right? Triple quotes. So now we're going to leave some information about our class. So we're going to say a simple class that describes a car. For now, a class is an object, an object is a class. That's not exactly correct, but you can think of it that way for now. We'll understand the little differences later on. So you can think of a class like a giant function, except that inside of our class definition, this is kind of like when we go class car, it's kind of like going def car, if car was a function. But because we use class keyword instead of the def keyword, Python knows that it's an object or it's a class. So now we're going to create our own functions. So this is a special function that every class can have. And I'm going to explain this in a second. So just bear with me for now. Self type cost. So uh, oh, we can't use type. See, it's uh, see, it turns purple. It's probably reserved word. So model cost. We're going to use our comments here. And we're going to say initialize, initialize the object. Don't worry, I'm going to explain what this all means once we get into it. But that, as you know, the triple quotes, it leaves a comment behind. And then we're going to go self.model equals model. Don't worry, we'll explain this soon. Self.cost equals 
cost. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So let's now define another function. We're going to call it start. And we're going to put in self. Now, when you're doing objects in Python, self is a special keyword that uh, we need to use. So I'm going to just leave it in there. Leave it as a mystery now. We'll learn about self in the next video. So I'll start the car. Little notes to ourself. And then I'm going to say, um, hmm. you know, I'm just going to be really simple. I'm going to print. And I'm going to say self dot model dot title plus is now starting. There's more to this class car that we're going to build. But for now, I want you to pause the video. Well, stop the video and write out this code. And in the next video, I'm going to start breaking this down. We're going to complete our class and then I'm going to break down all this stuff, what init is and self is and why we have self here and here, etc., etc., etc. When you're learning object-oriented programming, by the way, you're entering the realms of the super nerd. So uh, congratulations. Hey guys, you're watching lessons from my beginner's Python course where I teach you everything you need to know about Python to get up and running as a developer. This is the object-oriented programming section. Of course, with the full studio web version of this course, you get all the quizzing and the hinting and the interactivity and the tracking. The videos alone are, people love them, but when you add all that extra stuff, it just supercharges and speeds up your learning process. All right, have fun. So hopefully you've written out this code so you can follow along. So I've opened up file 46, object oriented Python, and uh, well, the file name is class two objects. So we're gonna explain that in a second. First of all, you notice here, I wrote Steph, not Steph, I wrote self.model.tile. Now this is wrong. It's actually supposed to be Taito, like this. I believe we've seen Taito before, and that basically titles or capitalizes the first letter in a string. So when I am saying self dot model dot title, so self is what you call a self referencing variable. Essentially, by putting this code in self like this, here self like this. This is telling Python to basically refer to itself. I know this is very strange, so let me just give you an example. So you notice here, init yourself model cost. And then we see inside of the class car, we have another function where I say self, and I go self.model.title. So self.model, what does model refer to? It refers to this variable here. You know what? First of all, this is very confusing for everybody here, especially myself. No, it isn't for me. So let's just run this code and then I'll explain to you how it all works as we watch it run. So I just started a code F5. We've seen this many times before. And you notice nothing happens, right? The prompt is empty, right? Just like a function, classes don't do anything. They sort of stay in stasis. Class code is in stasis. It doesn't do anything until you tell it to do something. So how do you tell class code to do something? you have to create an object out of that class code. So what does that mean? Well, you can think of a class. Well, let me just make a comment. Class versus object. We have our class code here, and we have the class keyword, and we've created the car class. So you can think of a class as a blueprint, as a cookie cutter, as a template for objects. Now, the way object-oriented programming works is that you create your class, which is your blueprint. Think of a blueprint when an architect is designing a house. They have a blueprint, they design the house and rooms and this and that. And then the construction worker takes that blueprint and uses that blueprint to then create the house out of bricks and wood, etc. Object-oriented programming kind of works that way too. So first thing you do is you create your blueprint, which is the class. Now that you have that class, you can tell Python to create an object out of that class code. So let me just show you how that works. So I'm gonna say my car is equal to car. Now, what we need to do, since we have the init function here, and init is two underscores, 
init. This is a special reserved function that you see in classes. Now, this we ignore, because that's kind of like a default thing. We'll get into that a little later. But you notice we added this argument and this argument. Well, it's actually a parameter. This parameter and this parameter. Just like any other function, you have your parameters. Now, since we have parameters, we have to give value to those parameters. So I'm going to say the model is Audi, comma, and I'm going to say the cost, depending on the Audi, is $90,000K, $90,000. So by doing this, what we've done here is we're actually creating the object called my car based on the template car. So that's what this line does. This is called object instantiation. Nerd word, nerd word, object instantiation. We are instantiating an object. We are creating an object from the car blueprint. And this is how you do it. So this is the variable and this is the blueprint call. So we're saying use a car, create a car with the model is Audi and the cost is 98K. Now, because I put quotes, you know, these are both strings. Now we ignore self because what self does, it tells Python that we are referring to this particular object. I know it's a weird concept, but don't worry, it will come to you in a few minutes. So my car equals car. So we have a car here. So now what can we do? Well, we have another function start. So how do you call this function with the my car object? So we go my car dot. Remember we've seen that, especially when we were drawing my car dot start. And what that should do, it should print out this. So let's save this and let's F5 and run the code. There you go. Audi is now starting. So what happens is first thing we instantiate our object, we create our object, and then with our object, we use the dot operator to point to a function built inside of our car class. And we just say start. We have the self variable here so we can use it in our function to refer to this object here, well, this class, right? So when we created our object right here, you notice we added these two arguments, Audi and 98K. Remember I told you always ignore self. So we said the model was Audi and we said the cost was 98K. So then when we use this function start down here, it prints out self.model.title. So what this is basically saying to Python, for this particular object, in this case, it's the my car object based on the car template for this particular object. And when we created the object, we said it was an Audi. It had a cost of 98 K. So we're saying self. So this is this object. And we're saying model, right? This is the variable model. And then what's this title? Title is a function we've seen before. It's built into Python, in fact, so we can use it in our objects. And we're saying make this title text. In this case, it's Audi. Give it a capital. And you notice it's a capital. Now we can create multiple objects. My I'll say second car. And I'm going to say it's a, I'll say it's a Ford and it cost 28 K Ford cars are much cheaper. So then we're going to go my car dot start. Now let me put something in here. So we go print creating new car. So let's add in a new line using the backslash new line, backslash new line. So that's just going to create a space in between. So watch what happens. So we're going to run this code now. So we created the first car and we called the start function. And what happens? Audi is now starting right here, right? Self.model.title is saying get the model of this particular car. In this case, this car here, my car, and make the first letter capital. That's what title does. If I took this out, let me just take that out and I'm going to save that. We'll run the code again. Notice how Audi is not uppercase now. So let's put that back again because I prefer uppercase. There we go. Save that. Let's run it one last time. Okay, so first thing. We call my car dot start on the Audi and it says Audi is now starting. Then we wrote creating a new car, create a new car. And we have spaces here after a sense is create a new car simply because I put in a slash N and you see my second car here. We created a second car. So 
my second car, and then we created a car here using the car template, right? And we said it's a Ford and it's worth 28K. And then we go my second car dot start. And because it's the second car, the Ford is now starting. See, that's the reason I created a second car object from our class template here is to show how we can create many objects from the same template. So I've opened up the file 47 object oriented Python init and methods.py. So what are we doing here? First of all, you notice that I use these uh, triple apostrophe to comment out our init function. So init, as far as Python is concerned, does not exist in this particular class. This is a class here, our class car. And you notice that I also commented out this print here because since we did not create the init function, self.model does not exist in this particular version of the class. So if we try to call self.model here, we would get an error. Anyhow, we'll not call it use self.model. Anyhow, so what I've done is I've changed the function start and I just gave it a very simple print statement, very generic. Now, before I go on, the first thing I wanna point out is that in object-oriented programming, when you have functions that are inside of a class, like here's a function, here's a function, et cetera, et cetera, for whatever reasons, the nerds will call functions that are inside classes, we call them methods. They work exactly the same, except they are called methods because they are inside of classes. So you're gonna hear programmers go, how many methods do you have in that class? And blah, 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 methods, blah, 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 methods. Now, technically methods are functions, but whenever you create a function inside of a class, just keep in mind that they're called methods. I just wanted to point that out. And this is consistent, this is the same in all the object-oriented programming languages, whether it be C Sharp, Java, et cetera, et cetera, just about all of them. When you have a function inside of a class, it is called a method. Anyhow, so let's get back to our code. So you see, I've commented out our code from the previous lesson where I was creating a car object by feeding it two arguments. Now, since I commented out def, def no longer exists here. It's just gonna be skipped by Python. If I try to create our car objects by feeding it these two arguments, the uh, model, and the cost, model cost, we would get an error. So what I've done is I've created a new car object based on our new version of the class car. This is how I create it. We instantiate the object here. So this variable basically is a car object based on this blueprint, the class car. And I call the start function using the dot operator in, this is start function, oh, excuse me, start method inside of our car object. So let's just run this code and see how it goes. So you see car is now starting, which is exactly what we expected. It prints this out here. So here's the thing. The init method, remember method is just a function. The init method is something that you can optionally add to a class. And why would you want to have init? Well, init allows you, I'm gonna unlock init now. There we go. Init allows you to tell Python what has to be done when the class is used to create an object. When you initialize an object from a class, what happens if you have an init function created here, Python will automatically run this function whenever a new object is created. So watch this. So now that I've defined an init function, this tells Python that our car class needs these two arguments filled in, or these two parameters filled in, when the car is created. Now remember, we always ignore self. We always ignore self whenever we see it. We just need to put self, anyway, we discussed that in the last video. So let's run this. Well, first of all, I'm gonna save it. We're gonna run this, we're gonna get an error because we actually don't provide this extra information that init is looking for, watch. Unexpected indent. Oops. Oh, let me fix that first. <laughs> there we go. We'll save that. Now we run again. Here it is. And type error. 
it says init, it's saying the init function, missing two required positional arguments, motto and cost. So that's a pretty fancy way of saying we're missing motto and cost, the two arguments for the init function. So you see, when we try to create a car object from this class, because we created init, Python demanded that we have a couple of arguments there. So I'm going to do that. Give it some arguments. Bang. Now we run the code. Everything's fine. But you see, our print statement doesn't use the information that we loaded up with our car. How did we load up the information? By providing the arguments. So that Python on init says self.model is equal to this argument. Self.cost equal to this cost. So let me just uh, comment this out. Bring back the old one here. And you see, now we can use this model variable. This is essentially a variable, right? We can use this model variable in our logic. So let's now run this again. I'll save it. F7, oops, F5 again. Watch this window. As you see, it now knows that it's an Audi, right? We created a new car. It's an Audi. And we know that we have a capital A here because of this function that we called here, title. And there you go. We've learned some new stuff. We learned about the init function and how it works when we're defining a class and creating objects from that class. Remember, you create a class, blueprint, the template. And then when you actually instantiate your objects using the class template, this is when you actually create the object. So this is the object. So then when you have the object, you can call methods or functions, methods inside of our object. We only have one method here besides init, and that's start. So we call it start. Now we could add as many methods, or in other words, functions, as we want to our class, and a whole lot more. All right, now it's your turn to write out this code. Try an experiment. First comment out init and then try to create some objects, try to create multiple cars, and then uncomment in it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's very important that you write code because the more you write the code, the more this stuff is gonna make sense, trust me. All right, now that we know the very basics of object-oriented programming in Python, what I want to do now is jump back into tkinter, or tkinter, depending on, on how you want to pronounce it. So we'll open up this file, number 48, Python GUI with tkinter basic window. And what we're going to do here is we're now going to look at tkinter with our more advanced nerd eyes. You remember we used tkinter or tkinter to draw on page. So now that we understand OO technology or OO techniques, we're gonna understand the TK intercode a little bit better than we did before. So let's start off with something very simple. So first of all, we have our import here. So from TK inter, TK inter, we import star. Now star means everything. This is the wildcard. So we're basically importing everything that's found in the TK inter module, right? And inside that module, we have a whole bunch of code all organized inside of a bunch of classes. So this very first line here, we are essentially instantiating the TK object. So we have a class in there, it's called TK, and you know it's a class because it starts with a capital. Remember class names start with a capital. So we are assigning this variable root to this class. So we're creating a new TK object and we're calling it root. So the first thing we're doing is we're going root dot title, our amazing Python window. So we know from our work in object oriented coding that when you have a dot after the name of the object, we are calling a method. Remember, a method is just a function that exists inside of an object. We know now from our own work, we just create our own classes, very simple classes, but nonetheless, we are calling a method built into the TK. So what does this TK do? This basically creates a window, a window which Python will spawn a GUI window, which will kind of look like this actually. So 
let's uh, look at the next. Let me hide this for now. So let me look at the next variable here. So we're creating a variable called w, which is the greatest name for a variable, but whatever. We'll work for now. And we are creating a new object with the label widget. Now, a widget is a term that is used inside of tkinter to describe a bunch of classes that build GUI elements in your Python window. So widgets is just a word that they use to describe a bunch of classes that are used to create visual components with Python, like a label, like a window, and so on and so forth. So once again, because we know that Python convention is that whenever you have a class name, you start with a capital. So we know we are creating a new object from the label class. And of course, this label class, it is from the TK inter module, of course. So this label class has two arguments. First, it has the first argument here. So the first argument it needs is to know where we're going to put this label. The label is kind of like a, a block you'll see in a second, a visual block that you see in your window that Python is going to generate. So we're saying we want to create this label inside of the window root, right here, root, right? And we want to add this text to the label. Hello, TK Inter, one of Python's tools for creating GUIs. GUI is short for graphical user interface. And then we call the pack method on the label object, right? Because when we go w equals label, we're, this is the label class that we're using to create a label object. And this is the control handle for that label object, right? This is becomes our object, our label object effectively. And then we are calling the pack method. You know that because inside of our w object, which is based on the label. So w dot pack. And what this pack does, it tells Python to fit this text inside of the window, which just comes from here. And then what's this root dot main loop? This is basically telling Python to keep the code running, to keep the code running until we close the window. So uh, I think we've seen that before. So anyway, let's just run this code and we'll see what it looks like. And here you go. Our fabulous window appears. This is the window. If you look at root.title, our amazing Python window right here, our amazing Python window. So when we created this window here using the TK, you root equals TK, this is what we created here. And then we said, give it the title of our amazing Python window, we see it here. And then we created a label. We have one label, basically is, label is this whole thing in here, this thing in here. And we said, stick the label inside of the TK window well, the window we created with TK, which is this window here, and give it the text. It's hello, Tinker, one of Python's tools. So that's cool. So and then we say w.pack, which basically tells Python to basically put it all in here. And then we say keep this window open until we close the window here. And uh, you see that being done with root.main loop. And that's pretty much it. Now, this is as simple as it gets, well, just about. But when we want to stop this program, we just hit the X and we're done. So what you should do now is you should write out this code, change the title a bit, maybe change some of the text. In the next video, we're going to go a little bit deeper working with TK Inter, so we can look at how we're using the objects that are inside a TK Inter module that allowed us, well, the classes rather, that allowed us to create our GUI window, graphical user interface window with Python. Pretty cool. Hopefully, between this lesson and the last lesson, you wrote out some of the code. So let me pop open that again. Now I'm going to go into 49 Python GUI with TK Enter nicer window.py. Now you may have noticed this conspicuous image, the powerful Python course icon, for the first part of the course anyway, python.gif. And we'll see why I have that here in a second. So let's open this up. So you see very, very similar code. Let me get this out of the way for now. We see very similar code to what we saw in 48, but I've expanded upon it a little bit, changed it up a little bit, so you can see how it works. The whole point of these two videos is to show you our object-oriented skills, or at least our understanding that we picked up in a few videos before these, before videos 48 and 49, how those object-oriented skills helps us to understand this TK inter 
module that contains all kinds of classes that allows us to build windows and GUIs and add images to Python. You see, as a programmer, you're going to be using modules all the time. And the modules are almost always all organized in the form of objects, actually classes. Remember, we create class code, and then from the class code, we create actual objects. So let's look at this code. So again, once again, from TK inter import star, star means again, import everything from this package. So that you have this package, module, module, package, same thing. So you have this module called TK enter in there. You got all kinds of classes and we're saying just import the whole thing. Because sometimes if you're writing an app that's really a big, you may want to just import very particular parts from the module. Parts meaning particular classes. You may not want to import everything. Why? Because you want to make your code run faster. But because we're doing simple things here, we're just going to say, let's just import the whole module, all the classes. And of course, if it's not obvious to you, it doesn't make sense to you right away to be able to use any of the classes inside a TK interior, you have to import them. Otherwise, if you call this code here, Python won't know what you're talking about, right? So as you use this command here, Python knows all the classes that are inside of TK inter. So here we go. Here's our first class, TK. That creates that window that we saw before. And again, we assign it to root. So this is the class call, it creates the object, which we call root, which is a class of TK. Basically, we're creating a copy of TK, and we're just calling it root. So first thing I've done here is I create a new variable. And you see I'm calling another class. And it's called photo image, and it has one argument. And the argument is the file of the photo image you want to import. So if you remember here, I have an image, python.gif. Now, with TK enter, you can only use GIF images. After I'm finished running through this code, you should be doing this yourself. I'm going to leave a GIF image for you in the source files you could use, or you can go on the web, grab a GIF image. Depends on what you want to do. But anyway, so. All you need to know is that this code here is basically allowing us to bring a image into our window here. We'll see how that works. So basically we, we instantiated a photo image class here and, and we added it to this variable here. So now we're gonna create a new label. We saw this before, right? We saw the label. Remember in the previous code, we added the root, right? Tells Python we're adding this label to this particular window here. Remember this code creates a window. Instead of adding text, we're saying we're going to add an image by using the argument image equals and the image is equal to right here, Python underscore course underscore logo. So this is basically going to add an image to our window, right? Here's our right label object, which was created from our label class. So then I call once again the pack function, right? We know it's a function because right label dot pack just like with our own class so here's a little difference in the pack method i've added an argument i said side equals right so basically we're creating remember a label is like a little container space a little box of space that you can stick in a window now in a previous example we just added one label so we didn't have to specify left or right but this time we're going to add two labels so what we are saying here with the pack method we're saying stick this one to the right side equals right put it on the right side so we're basically going to be putting this label on the right side and this label contains this image here and this image of course we got it because we use the photo image class to grab this python image which is sitting right beside our file right okay so next thing we create a variable we've seen this before our text equals and we use the uh, triple quotes there to create a multi-line variable. With TK enter, you can only use give images. So we know about this. Okay, fine. So now we're going to create a second label. We're going to call it left label. And again, we're using the label class. And you notice this code. Instead of having it all on one line, we can do it like this. As long as it's lined up, as long as we have commas in between every argument, right? So we go label. We're going to add this again to the root, right? This is the root window. This time, we're going to justify the text. We put justify. You can justify text left, right, center. So we're going to say push, push the text to the right. We'll see that in a second. We're going to give the text a padding of 10 
pixels. And then we're going to add the text. Text equals our text, right? This is our text here. So we're basically, we saw this before, except it's, I just wanted to format it a little bit different so you can see that you can format it differently. And we're basically creating a new label. And in this label, we are adding this text and we're justifying this text to the right. So the text is going to be pushed to the right. So here, well, you see what it means. It's going to be justified right. We'll see what it means. Now you notice here, I have a period. Now, instead of doing this, where I said right label dot pack, what you can do is when you do create a new object using the label class, you can actually do a little shortcut and just call a method inside of this class called pack right away. Now, I could have done it on two lines like I did up here, but I want to show you sometimes Python gives us a nice shortcut like this. So dot pack, this is the pack method, which is inside of the label class. And I'm saying side equals left. So this time I'm pushing the image to the left and no, excuse me, I'm pushing the text to the left. And on this one here, I was pushing the image, right? There's the image to the right. One last thing before we run the code, I put print launching window. So this is gonna print a little command that we're gonna see in our shell here, telling us that the window is launching. So let me just line all this up. Okay, let's run the code. So you see window launching, window launching. Pull this up, here is our window, right? You look at the text with TK enter, you notice the text is on the left hand side. This is the left label and we added the text here, text equals our text. And we say pack, we said put it on the left side. So it's on the left. Even though the, the label is on the left, we told the text to push on the right. And you notice there's a space here between the text and the image of the Python. That's the padding, right? Padding X, right? X is horizontal, left and right. And uh, yeah, so if you look up here, the first label, right label on the right hand side, image Python course label, here it is. And we told it right label dot pack side right. And here it is on the right. Boom, boom, boom. Of course, we've seen this before, root dot main loop, which keeps the code running until we close this window. So I hope you see how our understanding of object-oriented programming teaches us how, in more detail, how this TK inter code we've been using, where we're using classes from TK inter, the TK class and the photo image class and the label class a couple times, how we use this to create this nifty little window in Python. And this is the source of creating visual programs that could run on Windows and Mac and Linux, et cetera, et cetera. So this is kind of cool. All right, everybody, now we're going to jump into creating a new class from the start. So we're gonna do one of these code now sessions. What's a code now session? It's just me giving you instructions about what to code, then I'm gonna give you a moment to code it, where you're gonna hit pause, and then I'm gonna show you what to do. So let me just give you a quick example. So we're gonna open up the IDLE, and I've created a new file. It's a file, new file, or Apple N, Control N. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a class. And I want you to create a class called My Doctor. That's the class name. And I want you to create three functions inside of my doctor. Well, as we know, functions inside of a class are called methods. So we're gonna create three methods. Say hi, say bye as doc question. That's it right now. So what you're gonna do is create the class my doctor, then create three methods. Say hi, say bye, and ask doc questions. Don't worry. We're going to fill in these methods after we get to the next section. So in three, two, one, pause the video now. And after the pausing of this video, unpause it. And about three seconds later, I'm going to actually write out this code. So again, we'll try it again. Three, two, one, pause, write the code. Okay. So hopefully you've written the code. So let me just start off writing the classes. Now it's important that you write out the code because the more code you write, the easier it is to understand all this stuff. So if you haven't written out the code, pause the video now and write out the code.
Okay, so first thing, we're going to create the class, my doctor. So we just use the class keyword, my doctor, and the colon. And now we want to create our methods. So our first method is say hi. So using Python protocol, we're going to go one, two, three, four on the space bar. Now I'm going to use the def keyword, say hi. And now I'm going to put the semicolon. Oops, forgot something. Semicolon. And because this is a method, we're going to put self here. Right. And then we're going to put uh, pass. Now we're going to create a new method, def say bye again colon self we'll pass that to final method death so i'm just going to cut and paste this let's erase this to def ask dot question colon pass and i have to put self remember self you have to put that in when you're creating methods inside of a class so that's pretty much it we'll put uh we'll just put this at the top for now later on we could put some comments up here perhaps comment member is done with the hash symbol or the number sign but anyway let's save this and here it is on my desktop so let's run this code we'll see what happens of course nothing happened because we didn't tell the code to do anything, right? We just basically created the shell, the skeleton of our class. So the next thing we should do is fill in the guts of our methods within the doctor class. So I just created a little space just because it looks better for me. So just to keep it simple, we're going to do a couple of, of print statements. So we're going to print hi. I guess that's what we expected, right? Print by, not bad, not bad. Here, what are we gonna do here? Well, let's do something a little bit more complex here. Can you remember how to create an input using the input function so that we can get an answer from people using our program? Remember the input function? Where you put in the input function, then the prompt We'll ask the person or we'll give them a place anyway to be able to type in some code. So the input function uses the input keyword. And then inside of the arguments of the input function, you put the question that you want to write. And then have this input function pass its results back to a variable called question. So I'll start you off. We're going to start with question equals. Now create your input function and ask the question, do you want a health tip do you want a health tip ready so in uh, three two one you're gonna type in the code for the input function three two one pause the video write the code okay i assume that you've written the code if you haven't pause the video if you don't know what to do eh, you're gonna watch the video so one two three i'm gonna type out the code so we're gonna write input pretty simple input function right and what is the question we're going to ask? We're going to ask, do you want a health tip? All right? It's pretty simple. Put yes or no. Basically, that's what's going to be presented to the person using your program when we utilize the ask doc question method, which we're going to do soon. So the next line. Let's create a conditional, an if and an else. So what we want to do is we want to check to see if they put in yes, or if they didn't put in yes, then we're going to do something else. So if the person puts in yes, have Python print out good, with an exclamation point, eat less sugar. So if they put in yes, I'll put a comment here. If yes, Python says, what did it say? It says good, eat less sugar sugar that's the tip so if the person says yeah i want a health tip they type in yes then just have python write good eat less sugar and if uh these are comments i'm gonna use coders lingo here if not yes remember when you got the exclamation point here that means not right so if not yes I, if 
I want it to be non-nerd writing, I would have put not yes, but I'm going to, I'm going to be a nerd. I'm going to say, if not yes, and this is not real code, I'm just giving you little tips here so you can write the code. I want you to print out, okay, see you next time. All right, so there you go. Okay, so now I want you to write out an if and else statement. And if they typed in yes, then you print out good, eat less sugar. If they didn't type in yes, they type in anything else. Okay, see you next time. Tip, use the else statement to take care of adding in the sentence, okay, see you next time. All right, in three, two, one, start writing a code. Three, two, one. Okay, I assume you've written the code, so let's uh, get in place here. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off if and question is equal to, well, double equal, excuse me. Yes. So if they type in yes, and then we're going to uh, print. Now let's copy paste this. Be careful about the alignment, meaning the if and the else has to be lined up. So here I'm going to just print pretty simple, pretty simple. That's the end of our function. Not so bad. So let's save that. I hope you wrote this out. If you didn't, write it out now. And now what we're going to do is we are going to run our code. So how do we run our code? Well, I think you know how to run our code. What I want you to do is I want you to instantiate or create an object out of our my doctor class and I want you to run the method ask doc question all right in three two one pause the video and write the code all right I assume that you've written the code so let's just instantiate our object so we're going to say uh, my doctor I'll call it my doctor equals my doctor Pretty simple. So that's the class instantiation. Uh, I could use any variable that I wanted here, but I decided to just write that. Pretty good. So now I'm going to use the method inside of uh, the my doctor class. This is the method here. So I'm going to write my doctor dot boom. Excuse me. My doctor dot ask doc a question. Pretty simple. We'll save that. Now we run it F5. Here we go. Look in the window here, the Python shell. Do you want a help tip? Yes or no? So I'm going to type in yes. Okay. Oh boy, we had a problem. You know what the problem was? I put a capital Y and it's only looking for a lowercase y. For sake of argument, we'll just run that again. Yes. Good. Eat less sugar. There we go. It worked. All right, so what we're going to do now, first thing, is to have you change this first if statement and to add in code to make the change so that we can check for, or test for, as nerds would say, test for yes with a lowercase y and yes with a capital Y. So let's just add that simple change to our code to make it a little bit more robust, a little bit more safe. Ready? In three, two, one, write the code. Pause the video. Okay, I assume that you've done it. So, one, two, three, I'm writing the code. So, I'll just kind of, there we go. We use the famous or key, uh, keyword here. I'll say that, F5. I'm going to lowercase, I'll do an uppercase Y. Hey, good, eat less sugar, it worked fine. Again, F5, I'll try lowercase. Hey, good, eat less sugar. And for the sake of argument, F5, I say no. Okay, see you next time. So our code was a success. I hope you've been writing the code out, as I suggested, because with every line of code that you write, it will help you to more quickly understand what is going on. We could be boring. I can have you... Well, you know what? We're going to be boring. What we're going to do, next thing you're going to do, rather, is I want you to call these methods using the same doctor class. Ready? Three, two, one. Pause the video. All right. I assume you've done it. So pretty simple stuff. We've seen this before. 
So this is my doctor dot, oops, say hi. That's pretty much all we have to do. Then my doctor dot say bye. But you know what? Let's do it um, in an order that makes sense, right? Say hi. That's it. So we, we come into the doctor's office. We say hi. We ask, when well, the doctor asks you a question, and then we say bye. So let's save that. F5. And it says hi, yes or no. I'm gonna go yes, give me a tip. Good, eat less sugar. Why didn't it say bye? Oops. Why didn't it say bye? Because we didn't put in our brackets here, right? We didn't put in our brackets here. We have to, when you're calling a method, you always have to put in your round brackets. Let's run that again. I go, yeah, sure, give me a health tip. Okay, well. I put Y-E-S, it skipped this, it went to else. Okay, see you next time, but by ran. So very good, very good, very good. So you might be asking yourself, why didn't it throw us an error when we just wrote say by like this and nothing was displayed at all? No errors, nothing. So just run it again. It's going to go yes. So even though... We didn't call our method properly, the say by method. Remember, when you're using a method, you're calling it. It didn't give us an error. Why is that? Well, that's the way Python works. I'll show you what we can do. We can go print. We'll see what Python does. And look at that. Bound my doctor say by of main doctor object at boom, 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 boom. Python is one of these very forgiving languages. And it's also a very flexible language. And this is an example of it. So you see this gobbledy goop here? This is a result of this line of code here. And basically, when we do this, we go print and we specify our object, my doctor, which is of course based on the my doctor class. Remember, we instantiated our object here, meaning we created our our object from the my doctor class. And when we go my doctor dot say bye, like that, Python says, okay, we just want to know some information about the say bye method, and it just gives us some information, right? It tells us bound method. It's a method that's bound to the my doctor object, right? So. In other words, it's a method. This is a method, right? These are methods. Method one, method. This is another method. Another method. Method is another word for function. So it's saying it's a bound method, meaning it's a method bound or part of the my doctor object. So bound method of my doctor object. And what's this at this? I believe this is the memory location where, if you remember an old lesson where I talked about how Python and all programming languages, all programs store their information in memory, I think this is the address in memory where Python is storing this object. You don't have to worry about this, but it gives you a little glimpse at what is going on behind the scenes with Python. So that's why when we called my doctor.say bye, Python didn't throw an error because Python thought, hey, we're just doing this. We're just asking for more information about this particular method. Now, it didn't print before because when you are inside of a PY file, you have to tell Python that you want to print it out. But anyway, so now you know why it didn't throw an error. All right, to finish off with this My Doctor class, I want to teach you something about doc strings. Remember doc strings? If you don't, you're going to remember them now. So a doc string is little comments that we leave behind with the triple quotes. Remember, you can have multi lines. We used it before. Well, this is called the doc string. And the whole point of the doc string is to leave information about your classes, about your methods behind. And there's a few things that Python does behind the scenes with a doc string. They're not just simple comments. So let me just show you. So class doctor, I'm going to leave a... Um, a doc string, and I'm going to say, hmm, I'm going to describe the class a little bit. So let me just make some room here. So my doctor class doctoring tells programmers about the class. So this 
doc string, which has to appear right under your class name, tells the uh, Python and people reading your code what this class is about. That's the whole point of the doc string. Doc string is short for document string, right? Or and this is a string of text, why right? that's why it's string, so it's document string. So it's just a, a nice nerd way of saying leaving information documenting your code behind. Now doc string also applies, can be used rather on methods as well. So let's say bye. I'll put a doc string here as well. So doc string. So that's cool. But what's even more cool is what Python can now do with doc string. So we've uh, created our class, right? My doctor. Now we can ask Python to tell us something about my doctor. So we can go print and we can go my doctor. Watch this code, double underscore doc, double underscore. Now what this is, this is a special uh, keyword and it allows us to view any doc strings that the coder put into a class. So I'm basically saying for the my doctor object, which is based on the my doctor class, which we created here, show us any doc string information, please. So we'll hit F5. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to comment out these for now, except for say bye. And we'll see what happens. So I'll save that F5. Oh, indentation problem. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, I had to fix some indentation problems. And so I had to uh, fix my doc string here. So it was not indented properly. It was causing problems for Python. So here we go. So let's just run this code. So you see right here, this is the first call. I say print my doctor underscore underscore doc underscore underscore. And look what happened here. It printed it out. My doctor class doc string right here. Now we can do that with uh, functions as well. So let's say we wanted to get the doc string to say by. So that's pretty easy. We can go um, print and we're going to go my doctor. So the my doctor object dot and then we say say by because we want to get that particular method and we just do the same thing. Boom. Let's print that now. Let's save that rather. We'll save it. Run it. Boom. Say by is not defined. So what did I do wrong here? Name error. My docker is not defined. So I got to read my error message. Try that again. There we go. Save that. Run the code again. F5. There we go. Say by doc string. Say by doc string. So this underscore underscore doc underscore underscore doc is called an attribute. And it's something that's built into Python. It's automatically created for you by Python. So whenever you create a doc string using the triple quotes underneath your classes, your methods or functions, or even your modules, we'll learn how to build modules soon. The doc attribute is a convenient way to access information that may be held in doc strings. Now, this comes in handy if you're using other people's classes where you want to learn more about the class. You could just instantiate the object and then call the doc attribute here and you'll get information if the coder, if the programmer put that information there for you. And if you're creating your own classes, they're pretty complex maybe, you would do that too. So you might put a little information about your class, a little information about particular methods, et cetera, et cetera. And coders, other coders, could use the doc attribute to learn more about your class without actually having to dig into the code necessarily.